I agree, Levens. This is Mr. Chucky. If you're watching this, you're definitely at the right place. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down there, and I promise you that will make your country problems a thing of the past. Without out of the way, let's get into the lesson of the day. In this morning's lesson, we're going to be looking at creditors' reconciliation. Before we do anything, we firstly need to understand what is creditors' reconciliation. Now, when we deal with creditors' reconciliation in grade 11, we are trying to make sure that the balance of our uh, statement that we receive from the suppliers is the same as the balance of the ledger account that is prepared by us in the business okay now there could be possible reasons why um the two items are not the same it could be because of errors and omissions it could be because maybe uh, someone is committing fraud uh, you know in terms of the manipulating invoices and all those things and also it could be that sometimes a uh, some information was not recorded so doing creditors reconciliation will help us to make sure that we identify any fraud that is taking place we identify any errors and omissions that we made and it is also an internal control tool so this is very important so now the first question here uh they're saying that they've given us some information uh, we are supposed to complete this in 20 minutes so please make sure that guys as you prepare for your project you also learn how to manage time very very important skill that you must have here they're saying that sondela traders is owned by um sondela he has a team um responsible for um for he has a team responsible for finances and then the head of the team is mandy and then who is an internal auditor willie is an accountant um, he is responsible for preparing the financial records of the business. And then they're saying that Sondela has requested Mendy and Willie to prepare a report on their new supplier, Chiteka Wholesalers. The business activities that have been uh, sampled for reporting are reflected in the January statement received from um, the creditor. So remember, firstly, we need to identify who is us. And they're saying that the last transaction reflected to place on 21 January 2024 very important we firstly need to identify who is us so in this case um when you look at this um sondela uh, traders is us and then them are uh, they are called our supplier is called chiteka wholesalers so our supplier um it's chiteka uh, chiteka wholesalers okay so you need to identify who is your supplier so in other words when we're talking about our supply we are talking about our creditor the person that we are owing money and then also sandela traders here we are regarded as a debtor because we owe that supplier money remember we bought from him or her on credit so when they send us the statement they will send us the statement looking at us as the task so in other words that what i'm trying to say is that you need to try and remember that uh when they send you the statement um your statement it will increase on the debit side and then decrease on the credit side but in our creditors ledger when we prepare it is going to increase on the credit side and then reduce on the debit side and then you need to think about the possible things that will make our statement to increase and decrease and also possible things that will make our creators ledger to increase and decrease okay um if you want to get that basic information up and it in the i think one of the lessons that i did on crs so here they're saying that a template that must be used to compile a report is attached uh, in the answer book a report compiled by an accountant and auditor will address the following so number one reconciliation of creditors ledger account of Chiteka wholesalers in the books of Sondela traders and the statement of account remember the creditors ledger account is prepared by us and then the statement is prepared by them very important uh, for us to note that and then next we have some few requests uh, we will look at them um as we do our activity so here they've given us the statement the information that is on the uh, on the ledger and the statement here must be the same okay because we are using the same um source document so let's start with the first one number one they are saying that invoice number 125 on 5 january 2024 was incorrectly recorded as 4,860 in the creditors ledger of Sondela traders. So remember here, 
it means that invoice number 125 it is correct on the statement so we need to check invoice number 125 on the statement is 6660 so they recorded 6660 and then uh what they did they've recorded 6660 and then i also want to check if i can quickly open a calculate okay so they've recorded 6660 this one is correct we have recorded um 4860 so we need to check what is the difference between the two and then also you must make sure that you go back and check that in your answer book they've inserted the total so everything is there we just need to work on the information okay so i'm going to try and open a calculator here so please uh, just bear with me as i do that now this is our calculate uh it's still loading so we'll wait for it okay so let's check so what is the difference between the two remember we were talking about an invoice and if you check our our the statement has recorded 6660 remember this is correct and then this 4860 was recorded by us so you can see that we are the ones who made a mistake we have undercasted so when we check for the difference uh, we are going to say um, 6,660 uh, and then we say subtract uh, 4,860 4,860 and then the answer that we get is 1.8 so it means that we have undercasted by 1.8 remember that we're talking about an invoice so once you uh, dealt with it you take it both sides so that you don't uh, forget to utilize it uh, you don't also forget that you've used it okay so that 1800 affects only the ledger because the mistake was made in the ledger so it means when you go to the ledger uh, we are going to say plus 1800 and then on the statement it will have no effect and then from there we can go to the next question the next question says that um Zondela traders qualified uh remember Zondela traders is us they're saying that we qualified for a discount on payment made on 13 January 2024 as per agreement so we qualified now here what they're saying is that uh, Chitega wholesalers uh, forgot in other words they did not deduct it and then they are apologizing indicating that it will be brought into account on the next statement so here um, they are the ones who made a mistake so we need to correct the statement okay so let's check what is the information on the 18th of January we can see that there's a payment of 2000 uh, there's a payment of 35,060 that take place now if you check when you look at this and you also um, look at what they gave you um, we have a payment of 35,060 however we were given a discount of 1.7 but the supplier did not grant us that discount so we need to tell the supplier to grant us that discount so remember this will not affect our uh, ledger but it will affect our statement so remember the difference for that um for that discount is uh, 1700 so that 1700 because it is a discount it must be deducted okay let's go to roman figure number three roman figure number three uh, says that invoice number 1350 for 9600 on the statement received was an error uh, which was made by Chitega wholesalers the invoice was not issued to Sondela traders so here what's happening our supplier made a mistake they recorded um, an invoice from someone else uh, on our statement and it was not supposed to be there so remember if they are talking about an invoice it means that they increased our dead by 9.6 uh, as you can see here let me show you on the question paper on the statement so remember there's 9.6 that's what they are referring to it was not supposed to be here because it is not for us so it must be taken out on the statement so we'd have zero here and then also under the statement we'd have um that 9.6 because we need to take it out because they added it okay i hope this makes sense now let's go to the next transaction the next transaction says that um credit note number 970 was recorded so remember once it's a credit note we know we are speaking about returns they're saying that credit note number 970 was recorded incorrectly by uh, sondela traders so let's check how did they record that credit note now remember in the statement that credit note number 970 is 2000 uh, okay let me check they said this credit note uh, 
Mm, let me check. They said the credit note was recorded incorrectly by Sandela traders. Remember here on our statement on the debit side, this is where our things are increasing on the credit. This is where they are reducing. So let's check how did credit note number nine, uh, number nine seventy get recorded. So let's check. So we have debit note number nine seventy two thousand four hundred. So what we've done, we've recorded it as if um we were buying while we were not buying. So if we recorded like we are buying, we need to firstly start by correcting the error, which means we need to minus, and then after that we record also the return. So which means we will double the amount. So if you say um two thousand four hundred, and then if you say two point four, uh, you multiply it by two. Remember here what they've done. They've recorded a return as if it was an invoice. So meaning that they recorded uh, when we reverse that return, we need to make sure that we minus on the, uh, we are actually the ones who made a mistake. We need to make sure that we minus on the debit side and also record the return. So it will be a negative 4.8 on the, uh, it will be a negative uh, 4.8 on our, ledger because we are the ones who made mistakes so that 4.8 will come here and then here it will have um, no effect and then after this we can go to the next one the next one says that invoice number 185 does not appear on the statement as it was issued after the statement date so obviously if invoice number 185 which we can see that uh, remember according to here invoice number 185 it's 8700 so obviously if it's not there on the statement it is because the statement was drawn before this invoice take place remember it shows up until i think the 29th of january so obviously this 8.7 will not be there so we are going to uh, put that 8.7 uh, let me just confirm we are going to put that 8.7 uh, on the we're going to put it on the statement So it will be uh, in this case it will be plus eight thousand seven hundred and then under our ledger it will have no effect and then the last one you need to compare you need to check which was recorded which was not recorded so remember the two thousand four hundred issue we spoke about it and also uh, even here we spoke about it so invoice number one fifty let's check if it appears so invoice number. 150 appears so let's also check invoice number 170 if it appears so it does appear so that invoice number 170 appears okay and then also uh, obviously the only thing that is not reflected if you look at here uh, the only thing that is not reflected both sides is the is the interest okay uh, so you can see that we have an interest on the statement that was not recorded on the ledge So we have interest on overdue so meaning that they are charging us 240 for that So we need to record that 240 under our ledger here So it will be plus 240 and then here nothing then once we are done with this we can quickly do our calculations So we'll say 47,678 we say uh, plus 1.8 we say plus 1.8 and then minus uh, 4.8 and then also plus 240 and then the answer that we are getting is 44,918 uh, so we have 44,918 uh, 918 44,918 let's see that other side if we say 47,000 uh, 47,000 um, 47,518 uh, and then we say minus 1.7 and then we say minus 9.6 and then uh, we say plus 8.7 so you see it's 44,000 
918. So on the theory question, they are saying that an internal auditor, you recommended that as an internal auditor, you recommended that um, payments should be made via EFT to the business. Now they want you to know why should um, we make EFT payments to the business? In other words, you need to tell us about um, benefits of EFT. Number one, remember, um, they are safe and reliable. Uh, reliable. And then also they are quick. Uh, you can say convenient. And then the last one they are saying give two internal control procedures uh, to control uh, to ensure control over the system so we need to provide um how they are going to control uh, when they make payments of issues so number one we need to tell them that um there should be division of duties uh so we mention division of duties and then also we need to tell them that in bracket uh one one person um responsible uh for making um payments and the other uh, the other person will be responsible for a uh, recording of uh, a recording and verification okay and then number two so what else should be done um we can just tell them that also I remember when it comes to making eft you also need to do we can also suggest that um, bank reconciliation um, should be done uh, it should be done regularly to detect uh, you can say bank reconciliation and creditors reconciliation should be done uh, regularly to detect fraud remember uh, you are making payments money is leaving the business so you need to check such things so guys i hope um this lesson was very helpful for you thank you guys for watching may god richly bless you shalom